Italiano, you know? Ah, yes. Ah, he speaks good. Good, he? Good Italiano. Why he's come from the... Or we, do we want to go in the water fast? Fast? Fast. Well, I don't know if we can go totally... I guess we'll go half fast. Half fast. Push the clutch in and let it roll. The clutch in and let it roll. Does he even have a clutch? I don't know. I don't know. Might not be one of the standards. Millennial proof. Really? Millennial proof. Proof from me. Yeah. Josh proof. It's no, sir. Nothing in this world is Josh proof. I found that out the hard way. Things have weight limits. Troopers. All right, guys. Hold your breath. No, I'm kidding. You're not holding your breath. But actually, ma'am, could you do me a favor? There is a little, the little hole beneath your feet. Could you reach down there and plug it up with your finger real fast? But and also, people feet up so you don't get wet. Get your feet wet. Here we go. Uh oh. How y'all doing? Boating, huh? Catch any crab? End of the year. Okay. So guys, a couple. You're gonna notice some boats out here in the harbor, and I'm gonna do my best to point out what type of boat these are. The two main fishing vessels here in Southeast Alaska are going to be your Persaners, your uh, Gill Netters, and your Trollers. Okay. Now, I'll see if I can point one out. Also, we have tender boats. Tender boats are little vessels, big vessels, that basically will tender the fish back and forth from the fishing vessels, the guys out of fit, at sea fishing, to the canneries. The reason being is the license here in Alaska isn't for how many pounds or how many fish you get. It's out by the hour. So you got to so you got to utilize all the time you can. So they have these tender vessels that'll go back and forth, and bring the catches from the cannery to the, and from the boat, and bring supplies to the boat and whatnot. <coughs> got a lot of mountain sea today. Also, you're going to see so the three ways they're going to be fishing for a lot of salmon here, mostly salmon. Uh, the gill netters. The gill netters are a little bit controversial. If you know anything about gill netting, they're illegal. It's illegal to do practice down in a lot of the states in the lower 48. But up here it's legal and what they do is they set a floating net that's about 30 to 50 feet deep, okay? And uh, they'll basically set it and the, the holes in the in the net are big enough for the fish to get their heads in but when they get their heads in they can't get back out to catch their gills. Just small enough to keep them caught in that net. And that's what that's how the gill netters are and they, they'll bring in a lot of, 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 of fish at one point. Hey guys! Wave the other duck. How's it going, y'all? There you go. Quack. Okay. So, yeah, the gill netters, like I said, they will bring in a lot of fish at once. And they take them up to the cannery, or the tender boat will take them to the cannery. Also, then you have the persainers. The persainers, you'll notice, they'll have a skiff, a big skiff on the back of the boat. Now, those skiffs, and once we see, if we see one, I'll point one out to you. Those skiffs can cost anywhere from $100,000 to $200,000 just for the skiff alone. Okay, and what they do is there's a net connected to the big, larger ship, a net connected to the to the skiff, or to the to the skiff, and they make a big circle with it and connect it back around to the boat. And they have this arm, this crane that comes out over the top, picks it up, and it's a big bag of fish. Pulls up a big bag of fish. Then they bring it over over the boat. They unload it on the hull, and they have a little hole called the fish hole take the fish on down in the fish hole okay they separate it now then you're gonna find the trollers which we're gonna come up on one right now see the Lisa Ann right there on port side that is a troller now do you see those booms on the right or the port and starboard side of the boat that stick way up those arms drop down at about a 45 degree angle and they're they're basically putting a baited hook out and they troll instead of you know netting the fish now has anyone been to Pikes in, in Seattle or any of the fish markets where they get to throw the fish at? You most likely, if you bought salmon fish, they got it from a troller. Those are the nice, big, beautiful cuts of fish that aren't banged around. Typically in the persainers and the gill netters, the fish are thrown around, they're banging into each other, they're getting hurt, they're getting, they're getting banged up. Also, stress levels. So when fish get stressed out in a lot of their game, when you get, they're stressed out, it can actually affect the quality of the meat. Okay? So these these salmon are brought on board, you whack them in the head, and then they, they kill them, and they got them right there, and then they flash freeze them with uh, frozen salt water. 
fish it's a sight to see if you ever get a chance to. So it's a more rare thing to watch them hunting. Typically you'll see them out moving around but not hunting. We had an old captain last year that saw one hunting. And they, just like that, the sea lions were trying to grow wings and fly out of the water. I, I would love to see that actually. I'd pay good money. All right, guys. Now, do you see this thing? It says Northern Rim, North Rim Bank over here. That little gray building. You guys see that on the court side? That used to be our sixth fast food restaurant, Burger King. Okay, but Burger King, that location did not work out so well. Now. The, the smart people at Burger King or whoever bought that franchise thought, you know, it'd be such a great idea to have a drive-through window right here on that beautiful view of the Tongass Narrows, and uh, they're just a picturesque thing when you get your burger. People love driving to go through drive-through, right? Sounds good and well. One thing they didn't remember was the wind off there. So every time someone went through the drive-through, sure, we need to remain seated. Um, every time someone went through the drive-through, they said, "Hey, welcome to Burger King. May I take your order?" All they heard was. <laughs> no, they, they couldn't hear anybody. So that didn't last too long. And now it's a North Rim Bank, but as you can see, they put the drive through on the other side. Kind of a little bit of a wind block. There's another view of our lovely mall right there. Our lovely, the largest mall in Southeast Alaska. Once again. Now, like I said, we will be able to see a company called EC Phillips will get up. We're going to come right off to it. They throw a, one of the fish, one of the canneries, they'll throw over the chum and leftover piece of the salmon. And all the uh, all of the uh, seagulls will be there feeding off it. And eventually, and every now and then, you'll see a little harbor seal munching down. So keep an eye on peel. Yeah, and if you see any spouts, just uh, yell it. Yell out spout. Whale. Alright, guys. So, this is about the time of the trip where uh, I'm going to let you guys do your thing. I'll walk up and down the aisles, ask you guys if you guys have any questions. I'm also going to be carrying this bag of, my bag of quack. It is legal to sell quack offshore, so I do have my bag of quack. My quack sack, if you will. And it makes, like, like Cap said, it makes a perfect gift to kids that don't live with you. Okay. Like I said, if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer. I'll take pictures for you guys. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to turn this off real quick. From the Safeway, a couple liquor stores, uh, a McDonald's, and a few drinking shops in there, so you can go pay your bills, get a double cheeseburger and his mouth off for that night. Yeah. This is the only car.